We can leave the jade here. I have already called for a jewelsmith to shake them into the implements that we will need. Ah, yes. I have yet to go and see Child. So, as for the jewelsmith's remuneration... Guess we can't do anything else. Also, is this where we're doing the rite of parting? Yes. I have already rented this location, and have begun making preparations for the rite. That's right. The Liu e Qixing have acquiesced to using the same location. But when something this big happened here, should suspects like us really be at the crime scene? We might get caught by the Millilith. Although with that said, since we got back from Dwayne Karst, none of those pesky Millilith soldiers have come chasing after us. I wonder what that's about. Also, the... uh... Rex Lapis Vessel. Traditionally, we call it the Exuvia. Ah, oh, right! That's what it was called. You seem to know everything, Mr. Zhongli. Um, so, was this Exuvia hidden away by the Qixing? I mean, we haven't even figured out who the murderer is. One must think that they already have someone in mind. Or perhaps they already know. Surely they must have found all the evidence that there is to find here. These things are for the authorities in Yujing Terrace to consider. Trying to help would probably only add to their troubles. Before the rite is conducted, the Exuvia will be kept temporarily in the Golden House. Golden House? The only mint in Liu, which is to say the only mint in Tevat. All the mora that flows throughout the world is minted there. anything bad. Paimon thinks it suits Morax. But why do you know this, Mr. Zhongli? Since the rite of parting has the approval of the Qixing, it is a semi-official event. As such, there is already some limited information available. Perhaps each has their motives. But this is the capital of commerce. A little exploitation once in a while is not unacceptable. In Liu, where the god of contracts reigns, only contracts may not be betrayed. I for one have no issue with little maneuvers outside their remit. Well then, we should go and prepare the perfumes used in the rite. Perfumes? Where will we get those? Do we buy them? No. Perfumes used to honor the gods must be freshly decocted. The quality of the silk flowers we require is also special. Silk flower petals contain a fibrous material of good quality, often used in brocade making. Its scent, however, is most elegant, and is especially suited for solemn events, like giving offerings to gods and adepti. It's time for Zhang Li's lectures on high society again! <laughs> we shall not speak of the details right now. Follow me. We shall go to the merchants to purchase our ingredients. The Lord of Geo protect you, and fortune find you. Hey boss, do you sell silk flowers here? Silk flowers? We certainly do. Which kind would you like? Which kind? The... The good kind? The best kind? Remind Paimon what kinds there are again. Ugh, you ignorant shoppers. Always coming in here with your stupid questions. Golden Housemaiden, Valley Weaver, and Fate's Yearning. One of each to start with, if you don't mind. My goodness, this gentleman is quite the connoisseur. You two must be his servants. Please refrain from any further attempts to contribute. Now then, please peruse at your leisure. Do let me know if you have any further thoughts. Silk flowers exhibit different properties based on how their environmental conditions differ from their ancestral habitat. Nevertheless, 
These are fine specimens, excellently preserved. Just look at the abundant foliage here, and these stamens, glamorous as a maiden of the Golden House. This strain is an evergreen, and mostly grows under complex hydrological conditions. By contrast, this variety thrives in any dark, damp location, often in large clusters. Morphologically, it is distinguished by the profusion of petals and densely packed stamens, though its powerful scent gives it away just as easily. Lastly, this strain is quite the recluse. Unlike its exuberant cousins, flowers and foliage are minimal, and when in season, it has a subtle yet enduring scent. It was first discovered by the ancients when they scaled the mountains in search of the Adepti. Silk flowers have all but disappeared from the wild today due to geographical changes over Liu's history. Most are not grown by horticulturalists. Wow! A true connoisseur! Most of that was news even to me! I possess but a smattering of trivial knowledge. My traveler friend is the one to watch. They are on track to set foot in every corner of the world. Oh, Mr. Zhongli, you're way too humble. So, which silk flower did you want anyway? I'll take them all, boss. Again? How can I put this? When purchasing opera tickets, it is natural to decide based on which singer has the most melodious voice. The same logic applies when purchasing a pet bird. But this silk flower purchase is not an analogous case. The same logic does not apply. Perhaps you don't know. Tradition states that we should decoct perfume from different subspecies of silk flower when making an offering to a statue of the Seven. Rex Lapis will then make his own choice between the scents. Like several other tedious and complicated traditions, this one has become simplified over time. But this is the only rite of parting to take place for one of the Seven in 3,700 years. As such, I do think we should honor tradition down to the last detail in this case. Now that's settled, a question. <clears throat> do you have any mora on you? You forgot to bring money again? <sighs> Zhong Li? Uh, if I may interject, did I hear you say that these flowers are to be an offering to the Lord of Geo himself? Yes, in a sense. Gosh, well, why didn't you say so? I heard the awful news about what happened at this year's Rite of Dissension. It would be bad luck to say it out loud, but I've been worried about our dear Lord ever since. I'm worried that everything I've heard is true. Since these flowers will be used to glorify our Lord, they're free of charge. Just don't forget to pass on my regards. Are you serious? Why wouldn't I be? I would be nobody if not for Rex Lapis. If he hadn't written those poems in praise of my wares, They'd only be worth a fraction of what I can sell them for today. Huh. So much folklore here revolves around Liyue's deity making cameo appearances in support of local businesses. Thank you, boss. I think I speak for all of us when I say that your generosity has saved our skins. Our skins? You were the one who forgot to bring money! Please, it's the least I could do. Now that we've got the flowers, how do we make the perfume? Ideally, with the help of an expert. Unfortunately, none of my acquaintances have personal experience in the art of decoction. Talk about first world problems. Hence, I need you to help by asking around in the city. Try the common folk, especially women. So this time, we get to go around town looking for nice smelling ladies to talk to? Paimon likes this job! I will wait for you near the Statue of the Seven. Meet me there when the perfume is ready. Maybe we can find some good candidates at the Adventurer's Guild. 
<gasps> Let's ask Juan! She's master of the Leeway Bridge, right? Juan! We need to ask you for a favor. I stopped accepting commissions a long time ago. Sorry, you two, but you'll just have to ask another adventurer. Oh, it's not that kind of favor. It's just a teeny tiny thing. Wow. Just wow. I'm just going to assume that you're either joking or being sarcastic. To be fair, I put a lot of effort into my appearance for someone who spends all their time in the great outdoors. But I smell great? Don't be ridiculous. Well, Paimon thinks you smell amazing, so come on, Lon, what's your secret if not perfume? Now that you mention it, yes, there is something. What is that scent? Oh, it must be from the Qingxin flowers I picked on the way back. I forgot I still had them with me. Aha! The truth is out. Lon's got a soft spot for wildflowers. Uh, no, they were for medicinal use only. Anyway, this is a pointless conversation. If you want to know about perfume, try talking to Chi Ming. The fortune teller, right? Paimon remembers she smells pretty good. Thanks, Lon. See you around. Perfume? I rarely think to use it, let alone about how to make it myself. That said, some of the cosmetics I use are scented. Perhaps that's the cause of this confusion. Since I usually set up my stall by the docks, I avoid perfume like the plague, because Celestia forbid those lusty sailors catch a whiff and come hunting for the source. That's the worst thing Paimon's heard all day! While we're on the subject, have you never heard anyone mention Ying Ar's homemade perfume? Ying Air? Oh, as in scent of spring Ying Air? Yes, that's her. Many a rich family's daughter has gotten her to make perfume for them. Apparently, her homemade product is better than anything you'll find on the market. Great! This is just the intel we need! Finally, we're getting somewhere! Well, hello. You found me at last. I've been waiting for you. What? How did you know we were coming? Oh, I heard a rumor about a couple who were snooping around town looking for a sweet-smelling lady. Actually, I was starting to worry you wouldn't find me. This is the ultimate test of my appeal, after all. Snooping around? Why are you making it out like we're bad people? What can I say? People love to talk. Maybe you ought to be more discreet in the future if you don't want word to get around. Relax. I know why you're here. You want to get your hand on my homemade perfume, don't you? What kind would you like? Three in one go. My goodness. You have extreme tastes for someone your age. Maybe the rumors I heard were true after all. You're on the prowl and need some sweet-smelling ammunition. Is that it? Is that the best you could come up with? Even if you were genuinely offering perfume to a deity, that doesn't explain why you'd need three kinds. Sorry, your story just doesn't hold water. Zhang Li was right. People don't remember this tradition anymore. As one of my favorite poems goes, O oh, cherry tree, begrudge not thy blossoms as they are deflowered in the spring, for come winter, even thy sturdiest wood shall wither. That went over Paimon's head a little. <laughs> in short, I'm happy to help. Traveler, you can be my assistant, but you'd better make sure I'm the only person on your mind while you're hanging around with me. So... 
Where is a good place for making sweet, sweet perfume? You mean Wan Mean Restaurant? Good choice. Let's go. I've had a word with Chef Mao. We can start work now. Are you ready to please me? What did you say? I meant make me proud, as my assistant, obviously. While I'm setting up, you can go and fetch some water. This water will do nicely. Now, I need you to extract the silk flower essence using a crafting bench. Perfume making uses an altogether different technique from alchemy. Here, let me teach you. Very carefully, take hold of the mortar and pestle. Gently does it. You need to keep your wrist firm so your hand doesn't slip. Now use your strong hand to stir it with a persistent rhythm. Keep going until the juices start to come out. Ooh, you're a natural, like a fish to water. Now take these and try it out on your own using a nearby crafting bench. Don't forget to do all three. They look visually identical during the essence extraction process but I will put them into separate containers when the perfume is ready. Oh, Lee, you people must have iron stomachs. Listen. Wow, this is some exquisite silk flower essence. On to the next stage, the most important one of all. The essence is placed into water and simmered over a low heat until most of the water has boiled off. You must take care to control the heat during this process. If the temperature goes too high, it will affect the scent. So please, focus on controlling the heat. This is the final step. Don't waste a drop of that essence now. We want all of it in there. All three perfumes are ready. And you, my friend, were a wonderful assistant. A testament to the lengths you will go to for romance. It's so rare to see nowadays. Anyway, shall I give you a brief overview of each scent? It might just help you match the right scent to the right occasion. Paima wants to hear this. This first one is sweet as candy, straight out of a fairy tale. Younger women will love it. The second one is for those with more refined tastes, the first choice for daughters of high society. Finally, the third one has a soft but lingering scent, like a mist that captures the last light of dusk. Mature women adore this one. All clear? Don't get them mixed up now. You'll ruin the mood. Good. Be sure to come visit if you ever need help with anything, okay? I'll leave you with some parting words. One who tries to sail three boats simultaneously should be careful not to go overboard. <laughs> Come and hang out with me at Scent of Spring sometime, okay? Let's go! 
gave these three perfumes over to the statue Try of the Try something seven. new at the Wan Min restaurant. Mr. Zhang Li's probably been waiting a while. We've brought the perfumes, Mr. Zhang Li. Did we take too long? You were just staring up at the statue. Hmm. Uh, oh, you're back. Don't worry, I haven't waited long. Compared to the watch that Rex Lapis's statues have kept over Liu, this was but a brief moment. <laughs> well, how can a person compete with a statue? That is true. Well, have you brought the perfumes? Three sets, and not one less. <sighs> Thank you both. Let us offer them up. Of perfume. Miss Yinger said that it's sweet as a dream and it's liked by younger ladies. This is the second kind. It's got an elegant smell and the daughters of high society love it. The third kind has a gentle but lingering fragrance. Something, something like the dusk mist. And it's a favorite of mature ladies. Oh. What was that? That's the one older ladies like, right? Does that mean that Rex Lapis is actually an older lady? <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps. Rex Lapis has taken on countless forms. Perhaps that really was one of them. What a shame. We only got to see the giant dragon form, and... <sighs> Let's hope the Chi Sing can catch the real killer. We can leave that to the authorities. Let us focus on the fond farewell for Rex Lapis. So, we finished another step in our preparations. What's next? Next, I would like the two of you to help me borrow the cleansing bell. Cleansing bell? At present, a friend of mine named Madame Ping is the guardian of the cleansing bell. She lives near Yujing Terrace. If you ask her, she will know what to do. Sure, but aren't you going to come with us? Ah, I have certain reasons why I cannot be there in person. Please, do this for me. Man, why has he got to be so secretive this time? <laughs> <sighs> All things must change. Hmm, youngster, are you here to admire the flowers? Ah, but it's a shame. These glazed lilies have almost all wilted. What happened to them? Back in my day, people said that glazed lilies can read human hearts. If they heard beautiful sounds like laughter and singing, they would also bloom joyfully. But if they heard too much wild gossip or slander, they would quickly wither away. So that means these flowers feel what's happening in Lila? Yes, the rumors of Rex Lapis's death are no small matter. They are everywhere. Some say it was a Fatui plot. Others say that the Chising made it all up. And still others think that that which lies in the deep is breaking free. This harbor is like a mountain of dry tinder. One spark and the fire will consume us all. Well, I shall say no more. This old woman's grown too old and naggy. <laughs> Did you have something to say, youngster? Ah, that old trinket. <laughs> I remember it being here with me, but I've grown old. <laughs> I can't quite recall where it is exactly. An old friend of mine used to wear it on his person. 
Back when I was young, he saw me gazing at it often and gave it to me. But he told me then that if someone should come to borrow that bell, I should not be loath to part with it. It has been many years, and who knows how many times someone has come to borrow this bell. Still, though, I can't recall when it started. It's been a long time since anyone has come to borrow it. Oh, these old bones are so slow to look for things. I doubt you can wait that long. That's right, Granny. We'll follow you back home and search for it ourselves. And, um, we can help with chores if you have any, too. All right, children. There is no need to worry. I didn't place the bell very far away. Uh, do you live near here, Granny? Whoa, but this is Eugene Terrace. It's gotta be expensive. Oh, an old lady like me can't afford to buy a place in this city. See this ceramic teapot? My entire household is in here. How does that work? Oh, youngsters. I simply mean that the bell is somewhere inside this teapot, and you are quite welcome to borrow it. If you can find it. This granny's so weird. What does she mean her whole household is in here? Is she playing with us? Found it. <laughs> Youngsters are so quick on their feet. Oh, now, uh, let me. All right, that'll do. <laughs> Come on out now, children. Oh, in and out in no time. You youngsters really are quick. An adeptus. Oh. I haven't heard anyone say those words in earnest for a long time. As to whether I am one or not, child, surely you already understand. Ah, <sighs> Hyman kind of knows what you mean, but is also kind of confused. Are you really giving us the bell just like that, Granny? Don't you think it's weird? Something's just happened to Rex Lapis and then we come running up asking for it? Oh, don't be silly. Leela Harbor has been through a great deal in its history. In that time, it has seen the departure of countless Adepti. But no matter what, we have always performed the rite of parting first before any other matters. To cry, catch the murderer at the top of one's lungs, but ignore the rite of parting. That, to me, is what is wrong-headed. Now that you have come to borrow the bell, I guess that perhaps an old friend of mine has finally decided to take matters into their own hands. So, why would I be unwilling to lend you the bell? Oh? Well, if it came to that, <laughs> they would find a certain old lady knocking at their door. We haven't met in a while anyway. It would be nice to share a drink and chat. Well, you must have things to do. Since you have the bell, you should return. Oh, and do tell the person who sent you that if they have time, they can come over for tea. I don't have much to offer, but you can always count on an old lady for a pot of tea. We will. Thanks, Granny.
Indeed, this is the cleansing bell. Hmm. It's in good condition. Let's place the perfume we've prepared inside. Of course. How would I know that the bell was with her otherwise? That's suspicious. But if you don't want to talk about it, we won't pry. Oh, yes! That old granny asked us to tell you something. If you have the time, you can come over for tea. I don't have much to offer, but you can always count on an old lady for a pot of tea. <laughs> that tone does not suit you. Still, her teapot is indeed very good. There are none better for brewing tea. When a suitable time arrives, I'll bring a spot of fine tea and pay her a visit. So what's the next step in our preparations? Hmm. Next, we need to purchase kites. Ooh, Paimon loves kites! Are you taking us kite flying? Is this our break time? <laughs> no, no. Kites are children's toys, yes. But they also play various symbolic roles in Liyue's rituals. I will explain it to you. But our next course of action should probably be to purchase the kites first. Oh, sure. Curiouser and curiouser. Ah, sir, you're here. The seven kites you asked for have been made to order. Would you like to take them now? Yes, thank you. It's rare to see customers who want to buy this type of kite nowadays. In the early days, we used to get orders from people of all walks of life. Well, this is Mr. Zhang Li from the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor, so he's probably well versed in all these walks of life. We've talked about a whole bunch of things while traveling with him. He seems to know Liyue's favorite topics, money and government, really well, but he likes talking about less useful topics instead. Well, that's because I prefer to share fun things with you. <laughs> Children's toys are very fun things, that's for sure. I enjoy watching the children at play as much as anyone else, but there is more to it than that. Finely crafted toys are well loved by children, but this craft itself has been honed over thousands of years, and there is meaning behind that. I have made kites in Liyue for 40 years, and I am intimately familiar with the forms passed down from my ancestors. The meaning of these seven kites is far from banal. Indeed. These are decorations used in the rite of parting. The seven kites represent the seven. I took the liberty of coloring outside the lines when doing the insignia of the Animo Archon. As for the kite that honors the Geo Archon, one must follow the contract given right down to the last letter. These patterns are ancient and you can also find them in the Golden House. Paimon's her dad name before! Huh? The design of this kite displays a firm grasp on the cyclicality and eternity so dear to the Electro Archon. These markings of tree and leaf pay due honor to wisdom and the passage of time. All this on a single kite. Truly astonishing. Justice flows across the surface of the waters. War rages like a flame. As does that which the Cryo Archon once. <sighs> yes. These details are masterfully done. <laughs> the compliments of a learned man truly are pleasant. Well then, Granny Shen, I shall take these back with me. As for the payment. Well, allow me. <laughs> no, I was merely passing through. 
I see Mr. Zhang Li's the same as ever. When paying, well, when getting others to pay for him, he neither looks at the price tag nor his wallet. He knows a great deal about money and about the trials of the common man. He just doesn't consider poverty to be something that could ever happen to him. Or perhaps you could say that he cannot imagine himself lacking money. How has he not died of hunger yet? <laughs> Child, you are as fond of jokes as ever. Well then, since we've purchased our kites without incident, there's no need to take a break before moving to the next step in our preparations. The rite of parting requires helping hands as well as materials. We should be able to find some people near the harbor. Oh, by the way, take this bag of money. You probably won't want to let Zhang Li do the bargaining, if you know what I mean. Hmm, seems I missed out on some interesting information. I suppose I'll just have to find a more opportune moment next time. Hiring help? Sure. But let me just say first that I'm a reserve member of the Adventurer's Guild. I take adventuring commissions, but I don't do anything clerical. Adventure? Venturing into the mountains to capture a few crystal flies seems adventurous enough. Eh? That's not hard. Almost a bit too easy for a reserve adventurer. Eh, never mind. I'll only charge you 15,000, Mora. What say you? A most fair price. Five geo crystal flies. Yes, I do think it's worth about this much. I'll do it. People must have iron stomachs. Hmm. Should I save this money or invest it? A full day of odd jobs at Yujing Terrace. Hmm. No problem. 25,000 per day. A fair trade, yes? Whoa, that's expensive. Um, could you give us a bit of a discount on account of the whole Hero of Mondstadt thing? Hero of Mondstadt? Never heard of him. Well, you may never have heard of this hero, but it seems you've heard of Mora nonetheless. Thus, I will simply pay the whole sum. This is too little. I'd consider it if it was a bit higher. This price will do. No loss to me for a day's work. Oh, help? Sure. I, Tick, always put in 100% effort into everything I do. Of course, there'll be a premium if you want me to give 110%. So what's the job? Let me see. We are still missing some wooden implements over at Yujing Terrace. They aren't uncommon objects, so I didn't make any special preparations for them. No problem. That'll be 20,000 mora for a single trip. How does that sound? Done. Let me think. Deal. This price is reasonable. I'll hop right to it. All finished then? Splendid. 
Any leftover cash is yours to keep. A favor for the Fatui should never go unrewarded. You think you can buy us off with some loose change? No way! Paimon demands to know when the next payment is coming! <laughs> well, how does this sound? You give me the information I need, and maybe I'll leave the Northland Bank's vaults open and unattended for half an hour. What info do you need? Huh. Does that mean you know what he's after? Yikes! You're right! Signora! <laughs> you both need to calm down. I don't know what's gotten into you. Just what is this about? The atmosphere got so tense all of a sudden. <laughs> Next, we need some everlasting incense. For this, we need to go to Boo Boo Pharmacy, the finest pharmacy in all of... Is... everything okay? Everything is fine. I was just informing them that they need not return the surplus mora. Now if you'll excuse me, I must be going. My child wasn't happy with us just now. Huh. The reception is deserted. And it seems kinda spooky in here. Hello? Is anybody there? Welcome to Boo Boo Pharmacy. Did you hear that? Where did it come from? The reception, it seems. How about you go check it out, and Paimon will bring up the rear. this one over here. What's the talisman doing on her forehead? It can't be. She's... a zombie! Welcome to Boo Boo Pharmacy. I am Chi Chi. Once upon a time, Chi Chi died. Then, Chi Chi was saved by the Adepti. Now, Chi Chi is a zombie. Something like this would be unimaginable in Mondstadt. Uh, hello, little girl. Do you sell everlasting incense here? Excuse me, sir. Did you bring your prescription? I... Surely no prescription is needed to purchase everlasting incense. It's not a controlled substance. Chi-Chi can get your medicine. But... Only if you show Chi-Chi your prescription. These are Chi-Chi's orders from Chi-Chi. Zombies are limited to acting within the confines of their orders. And somehow in this case, the zombie issues her own orders to herself. My dear Chi-Chi, we didn't bring a prescription, I'm afraid. But we do hope that you can still help us find some everlasting incense. Okay then. How did you manage that? But, Chi-Chi helps you. You help Chi-Chi. Only fair. Since when do customers need to do favors for customer service staff? Never mind. Just think of it as a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. That way everybody wins. Sometimes in Liyue, the art of the deal is simply about victory via mental gymnastics. Go to Mount Tianhong. Find the Guizhong Ballista and hunt a cocoa goat. Please and thank you. Hmm. Guizhong Ballista. I have heard of this device before. It's a kind of crossbow turret, installed on Mount Chinhong by an adeptus in the distant past. An early mechanical device. 
Located in Qianhong Pass, it was designed to automatically fire at large monsters, protecting Liyue from external threats. Mr. Zhang Li really knows Liyue inside out. Apparently not quite. This is the first I have ever heard of the Coco Goat. The Coco Goat is a legendary animal, an adept beast. Did you want to add anything else, or...? No, just that the Coco Goat is a legendary animal, an adept beast. What it looks like, don't know. Where to find it, don't know either. Where it came from, also don't know. Very well then. Let's start by investigating near the Guizhong Ballista. Perhaps we will find some clues. <sighs> what the heck is a coca goat? <laughs>